everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and what the hell is going on? So it's the Saturday of a YCS right now, and it looks like once again, we've gotten a list at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This comes from at Yu-Gi-Oh! Card EU. I'm following them already. I am pretty sure they are an official account. In fact, let me just check real quick that I'm not just getting got. Yeah, 90k followers. That's not some sort of meow alt. Uh, so this does look to be the official ban list. Um, obviously, I can see some of the stuff that's on here already, but I do just want to say I've gone on record in some of my members only videos and speaking about how hard it is to actually balance this format. And that's because Snake Eye is almost completely composed of new cards, which Konami doesn't want to hit. Instead, I expect them to either unhit cards from other decks that they did during the Agov season, the Unchains, the Pearlies, etc., or hit kind of tangentially related generic links, things like Link Karibo or Zelantis or the like. Um, I can see that I was correct in at least one of those assumptions, but uh, let's just do a little bit of a reaction and I'll talk about what I think it means for the format, what decks are going to be playable, etc, etc. Um, you're just here to watch Bussy Boy make the funny face. The funny face! Okay, so these are perfect. Um, just reading these four forbidden ones, it's everything I could ever want. One of the really frustrating parts about modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is that a significant amount of decks are able to... Um, put together really expansive monster combos, but unfortunately, no matter what tools you give those individual decks within their archetype, it always competes with, well, the fact that there are really powerful generic monsters uh, that are almost always better than what archetypes are given. And those monsters are almost exactly Borload Savage Dragon, Baron de Fleur, and Apollosa Bow of the Goddess. And I am so happy to see two of those taken out to pasture in Baron de Fleur and Borlode Savage Dragon. Also a very direct hit towards the specific build of Snake Eye that does not play the Fire King cards. Uh, that's because that build would go through a combo in order to end on the access to those monsters that would insulate it against otherwise very powerful uh, going second options like Evenly Matched and the like. I'm really, really happy to see those gone. Link Haribo, unfortunate hit, but I think its time had really come. With respect to Snake Eyes specifically, it means that the first time you make Link Haribo, you will never get negated by targeted pieces of interaction like Effect Veiler or Infinite Impermanence afterwards in your combo, which is super frustrating if you're holding like two of those. And Summon Limit, happy to see that taken out to pasture as well. It had basically replaced a significant amount of the cards in the extra deck, uh, the slots in the side deck rather, that were... Um, uh, where you would put, like, Gozen or Rivalry or Teak Boo. Um, I think what happened was Konami expected this card to not be as backbreaking because while it does functionally win you the game if you go first, it's not a card that you can play through on your own turn. Whereas something like Gozen Match for a deck that never runs into its restriction could just have it up at all times with no problems. The problem is, one, you can turn it off if you're playing Snake Eyes by sending it for any of the Snake Eyes monsters or by way of original Sinful Spoils, and two... Um, it still wins you the game. Like, it doesn't matter that you are susceptible to it. You win. You know, who cares? Uh, unfortunately... I've gone on record saying this, I don't think it resolves the outstanding problem, which is there are a ton of floodgates that fulfill this same purpose. I think the next one that people will be slotting in that summon limit spot is deck lockdown, so be on the lookout for that. Next up, the limits. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, this is disastrous. Uh, I've gone from immediately loving this list to being very scared immediately. So, Arc Nemesis Protoss, a really powerful part of an end board that a couple of decks in particular can access, uh, that's not fun to play against at all. Um, you would only ever play one copy, so it's a limit means absolutely nothing. It could be at five, and it wouldn't matter. Um, it was played almost exclusively in Sword Soul, and I understand that by taking a card like Baron de Fleur out to pasture, you are hurting Sword Soul. This is potentially a way for them to make up that difference. Uh, but it engineers a game state that is really unfun to play against. This is disastrous. Don't let this card back off. No one wants it. Uh, Title Dragon Ruler of Water Waterfall is completely fine. Um, I I'm not going to redo the TMT because it's functionally the same deck, uh, but I would be interested in playing that. Colossus! Wow, are they unbanning Tatsum next? Uh, this is an interesting one because there are pretty easy ways to get to Colossus. Um, um, by way of uh, Cupid Pitch into what Nemesis Corridor, I think, is the card uh, that fulfills the entire condition of Colossus on its own. Um, yeah, uh, while Colossus is legal in Master Duel and has done hot nothing, again, it's one of those cards that, like, 
is frustrating to play against, and for that reason, I'm kind of upset. Uh, Kieran's completely fine. In fact, should have been removed like three lists ago. I'm glad we're leading the OCG on this. Like, take a hint, guys. Chicken Game is a really scary card to let legal. Um, I will probably be jamming some sort of uh, AFD list at the next YCS for this reason, uh, just because um, it really increases the power of that strategy in particular, having a uh, field spell that just goes plus without uh, having to do anything archetypal is really big. An anti-spell fragrance to one is very good. Honestly, should be put at zero. Another one of those automatic win condition floodgates. Next up. Um... Wow, that's uh, strange. <laughs> so it looks like Armageddon Knight and Pearly Delicious Memory have been set to two. If I'm not mistaken, those are from one. And both could be at three tomorrow. Would not change anything. Armageddon Knight is one of those cards that's theoretically one of the best normal summons in the game because it can get you like a bunch of link material. But in practice, it's super mid. I uh, Legitimately... Um, what normal summons are allowed to do these days by virtue of Snake Eye Ash existing uh, is is really shocking, and for that reason, I, I can't imagine being scared of this. And Pearly Delicious Memory is a big deal for what? Dinka Farm exactly? Is anyone else playing that deck to a serious competitive finish? I, I, I don't think that's actually the case. And then the Unlimits. Oh! There's your bussy boy reaction. Uh, so... <laughs> Destiny Hero Malicious! They, they watched my fucking video. There's literally no other conclusion I can come to other than the fact that they watched my video. They watched my semi-limit video. They said, Joseph, you're so right. It sucks that this is Malicious's house. Let's let's uh, get him back on the streets, baby. Um, Destiny Hero Malicious at three. Wow. So I hate to be like this, but this actually changes a great deal. Um, so Destiny Here Malicious is a really scary uh, card to have at three. It turns out that the difference between having two free link material and three is night and day. And uh, three is just a little too many. Um, there's also a number of problems uh, that ha are going to precipitate immediately. Uh, while the most effective enabler for this card is Isold and is now banned, uh, they just unlimited uh, Summon Sork in the OCG. I think actually we did not get the Summon Sork unlimit here. Which is great news, because that card is still pretty scary and can get Destiny Hero Malicious. Oh, its effects are negated. Oh, we're locked into warriors. There's no good warriors, you know? Wow. Um, uh, additionally, it really matters for a hero as well. Like, hero would kill to have an, a free summon off of Malicious. They printed Denier so that you could get the third Malicious again. Like, this is truly shocking. I think it literally helps it play through either one additional hand trap uh, or puts like a the link three as part of the end board which means that like you are never going to be able to get over uh dark law by battle even if your dpe is outed which is uh, staggering it's like it's a truly huge buff uh, you know as a hero enthusiast i will definitely be jamming Mal i gotta go buy maliciouses i had max rarity hero and now i'm one malicious short a uh, hard to three you know, call me crazy, but uh, I, I don't love this uh, unhit. Uh, I've gone on record a number of times and been like, I think Harpoor is a card that's like really frustrating. Um, it really gives the Orcust engine uh, a lot of uh, teeth. And it's not like Orcust is doing nothing, right? Like you got to understand a significant amount of decks are not playable by virtue of the fact that like Snake Eyes is so good. And one of those is Orcust, which has tops during this format. Uh, now, of course, it, it's an engine in a larger deck, something like Horus, and maybe they play Bestial Resonator or some nonsense, but um, uh, this is going to make a lot more people tinker with that like pile of cards that have incidental synergy, and wow, I mean, just nothing to say about that. Speedroid Terror Top, huge for goblins. I mean, it's unbelievable for goblins. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, two or three Terror Top isn't going to be the difference maker. Uh, really cool for like the um, the Speedroid Cash decks, although I think those only played one Terror Top anyway, because you never have an empty board because of the way the Cash work so you're always normal summoning it off of a uh, rubber band shooter or um yeah rubber band shooter i think oh god it's been a while since i played that deck um and sky striker mobilize engage all right i know i've been a naysayer of this card in the past but i think this is probably fine at this point in time uh, i will say um that this is not uh it's not a free unhit. It's not like no one's playing this. It's not like, you know, um, the Sky Striker isn't strong. Um, I think this will lead to the proliferation of Sky Striker as an engine. And I'm willing to be absolutely wrong about this. Um, but uh, the individual who won the uh, Kriparian uh, Master Duel Challenger Cup, I think, um, is someone uh, that's, that's uh, it was Ivy. She uh, was, like, posting lists in a Discord I'm in and played Striker 
uh, Snake Eyes a great deal uh, when um, it, it would uh, have benefited her. And I think that that's something that people can uh, now take seriously once again, uh, especially with less anti-spell in the DM format. Um, uh, Striker is also just a really powerful deck, and getting to draw a whole bunch of cards is really strong. We are in a quote-unquote hand trap format, so um, more access to hand traps by way of more draws is certainly quite good. Um, so how do I feel about this list? Well, it's hard to come away from this without the understanding that the best deck by a mile is going to be Fire King Snake Eye, exactly. Uh, it still has original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye, which is the card that makes the deck tick. I'm really happy they didn't touch that because it really uh, prevented uh, Snake Eye from being used in flexible ways, uh, which I think are cool and lead to unexplored archetypes being playable, like, uh, of course, uh, Fire King, but also things like um, TG and Infernoid as those come out. Um, uh, this certainly uh, makes it a lot easier to beat a lot of Snake Eyes decks because uh, now that there is a quote-unquote best build, uh, your options for going second are a lot more targeted and effective. Um, the lack of Pure Snake means that cards that beat those targeted options, like Baron de Fleur and Borlode Savage, are less available. Um, the uh, non-existence of a bunch of Floodgates is always something I'm on board for. Um... Yeah, in general, I am I am pretty happy with what they've done here. Uh, they've kind of taken the teeth out of what is, in I think, inarguably the best deck in pure uh, Snake Eye um, by unhitting a bunch of really powerful cards and seeing if it can compensate. Um, that said, I think there is some stuff that's missing from here. I would have liked to see the Sharvara reverted, uh, the Airlifter reverted. Uh, you know, I think, like, theoretically, um, Rescue Ace Snake Eye could have been a power player if it had more copies of Airlifter, for instance, but... Uh, hard to hard to get behind that uh, in a format that looks like this. Um, I will be probably uh, trying in the coming weeks a bunch of these strategies, uh, both on YouTube and on Twitch.tv. Uh, so do uh, either subscribe or uh, go to Twitch.tv slash MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, follow me there if you want to see me tinker with these strategies. Most notably, obviously, we'll be playing Hero. Uh, but I also want to try some of the old Toss decks. I want to try... Uh, decks like Goblino. Uh, Pendulum with Kieran is just a completely different deck than Pendulum without it. Um, and uh, Pendulum without Anti-Spell is also big too. So uh, I, I come away from this uh, this ban list happy uh, to see the actions uh, have been taken. Uh, a little disappointed that they didn't go further in un unhitting and uh, I mean really motivated to, uh, to play YCS Raleigh under this list. I think it says it will be in effect April 15th. So okay. That's it. Bye.